Hello everybody and welcome. Today I'd like to talk about a very interesting build uh, that I like to use even on a Stellaris PvP matches. So, uh, this build heavily utilizes Mega Corporations, but it does not stay that way. Because Mega Corporation Civics are great for early game, however later towards the game they're just not as good. Fortunately, game allows us to reform our government into something that is more long-term viable. The build that I'm using here is more closer resembling a ramp build. So early on, you might be a little weak. However, you will build up very fast thanks to your population growth, uh, utilizing the very cheap uh, colony ships that the private prospectors allows, as well as the mega corporation's own ability. So. The reason for that is because Mega Corporation on its basic gives you administrative capacity plus 20. Private prospectors increase that bonus by plus 10, allowing you to have the highest administrative capacity early in the game. As you go more towards uh, from early to mid game, uh, you will be able to reform your government. Now you have the choice to reform your government after you have unlocked your third civic or before. I prefer to do it. Uh, bef uh, after the third civic in order to save the 250 influence and use that influence for something else but it is all circumstantial if I don't have any um, enemies that I'm going at war with if I'm not really short on influence then I will do so early but let's analyze how this build works early on so let's first go to our traits you can pick just about any functional like race with uh, with the traits. I like to pick intelligent because the biggest problem with uh, Mega Corp builds is that later on they begin to fall behind in compared to these like uh, uh, very tall and uh, very pacifist builds. So intelligent allows us to keep up technologically. Deviance is a malice that doesn't really matter so much. Governing ethics attraction, uh, especially later in the game, can be a little bit of a problem because of the happiness reduction with your uh, more deviant species. However, this can also be negated uh, by, you know, increasing your ethics attraction or genetic ascension. Decadent, I'd say that's the worst trait uh, pick among these two. However, it's still, you know, somewhere to put those extra points in. It reduces your worker happiness and the slave happiness uh, when your species is of that type. So your workers are a little less productive and are a little, little more problematic, but that is okay. So rapid breeders, this is why we pick these two other traits. Uh, rapid breeders increases your population growth speed by 10%, which is how you find, um, well, how you determine your the growth of your economy, which is the most important thing. Now, let's talk about government and ethics. So, for your ethics, I like to go for xenophobe, egalitarian, and materialist. Now, you might say, wait a minute, Ark. Uh, you are going megacorp, and you're picking xenophobic, so why would people want to work with you? Well, in this build, you don't need to rely on your branch offices. In fact, you don't want to rely on your branch offices, because by the time branch offices even begin to pay for themselves, you will already be reforming your government into an oligarchy. So, because of that, you don't need to care. What you're there for is basically you're playing as Veyland Yutani. You don't care about selling your product, you're just there to colonize stuff as quickly as possible. The reason for that is the economy and population growth. So, Xenophobe for the population growth and the Starbase influence cost reduction, which is quite important considering you're gonna be sinking 250 influence into a reformation. I know I keep emphasizing that, but it's really not a big deal. And the starbase influence cost, well, allows you to uh, colonize and capture those systems faster. When you start, it's a race to capture the best systems. Egalitarian, this one is uh, quite optional. Faction influence gain, I like that, you know, more influence and specialist output. This is for all of them. So that's a pretty big deal. Uh, materialist, I actually used to play this as a spiritualist, however I find that my economy just does a little better with materialist. Temples are a great thing and it is still very viable. The unity bonus is quite good, being um, 
uh, on a unity on the advanced fronts of unity and reduced edicts is pretty decent considering later in the game because of your administrative capacity you will be exceeding that well uh, robot upkeep you will want a lot of robots with this one and research speed naturally now the important part is the civics you will want to pick either brand loyalty I picked brand loyalty but you can pick whatever you want free traders is a good option uh, media conglomerate if you know you're gonna be going a lot into war and you will have um, kind of wars of attrition Ruthless competition. This is also a pretty decent option. However, this is a more late game option The reason for that is by this point you usually will not be getting to max level of your leaders and 10% experience gain is Not very noticeable trading posts very viable as well brand loyalty I just like to pick it for the 15% unity bonus uh, because you will also want to get those traits in a timely manner because before you colonize your finish colonizing your first planet you want to have at least two things selected uh, two expansion points in your unity tree private prospectors as I mentioned this allows you to build private colony ships private private colony ships are basically identical to your colony ships except instead of the exorbitant cost of 200 minerals 200 200 uh, consumer goods and 200 energy you only pay 500 energy and even less if your leader had the correct trait uh, so this will allow you to quickly rush any uncolonized planets as quickly as possible and because the colony ships are no longer as punishing as they used to be the minus eight um, energy cost this is a great option for you to quickly ramp up your economy colonize planets before anybody else and so have the fastest growing power now with that being said let's take a look at the strategy in action the first things you want to do is to have at least three science ships these science ships go around either excavate uh, search stuff and try to find the best places to colonize so here it's pretty straightforward you know you try to optimize your options you're trying to you know um, either have two construction ships or one it all depends on the situation I generally have one but in this case I noticed I could freely grow both both to my north and south as such I have went with two now have going with two can be dangerous in a multiplayer game because all those um, alloys that you're investing into uh, capturing those places your opponent might invest into building corvettes so that's something important do check the rules but if there is a force ceasefire or in a single-player game you do not have any aggressive neighbors go with two construction ships and invest all of all of your like alloys into building star star bases and capturing systems so with that being said the big question with this one becomes how quickly should you colonize them and what planets should you colonize the answer to that is simple just like with anything else anything with like medium habitability anything above like 50 percent you should colonize them immediately the reason for that sure your economy might stumble a little bit but your population growth will be off the charts and your economy will probably stabilize about 30 years in uh, as you can see from this uh, footage the I'm um, quickly colonizing any planets that I see and I see some somewhat colonizable planets which raises my amount of planets to six or seven which is pretty big so with that I might make, make sure that my planets are specialized I will have a planet that creates only minerals those planets are also generate my alloys there's no specific reason for this but it makes organization easier the more you alleviate your mental load in this game the better you can perform because then you can spend your thoughts on something more important such as war or planning your technology so after you have grown enough what do you do next you plan for your reformation and when should you reform your government well the answer to that is as soon as you have colonized all the planets going to the mid mid game and to me mid game is less about the time and more about um, would be whether you have already expanded to all the areas you can without going to war if you already have then you are basically in the mid game in that situation your colony ships are not gonna matter so what you should do 
is you go to your government tab, reform your government. I personally prefer to pick oligarchy thank, because of the agenda bonuses and the leader bonuses that stay for 20 years. And uh, from there, I go with Byzantine bureaucracy as well as efficient, uh, efficient, what was it, administration that increases your administrative capacity. And when you should try to go for that is also dependent on your administrative capacity currently. If you aren't at the edge of it, uh, if you haven't exceeded your administrative capacity yet, you can still stay for a little bit if you don't have the influence. It's not a big rush. But when you have colonized enough, yeah, you can spend your influence. There's just not many places left to spend your influence. So you can reform your government and get those bonuses. You can also use it to, say, for research, if you're a spiritualist for your unity. I prefer to save it and respond to it situationally. If you don't, you can focus on getting those edicts out quickly and increase your research or whatever the, whatever the thing that you can increase. So, well, with that being said, that basically summarizes what we do in the mid-game. And in the mid-game, what you do with your superior economy, you will start gathering military, military capacity. You will try to maximize your military capacity uh, with your better economy, and you will find even AI or Grand Admiral difficulty will start being inferior to your economy. So, after you have the economic advantage, you just keep on growing, make sure all of your planets have reached at least 10 population so that you can increase your population even more. If you have the robots, always build the robots first, and I would suggest avoid genetic clinics. The reason for avoiding genetic clinics is simple, it's because they, they take 125 years to even begin to pay off, and early on in the game every point of resource is very valuable so I would not go for that. However, the robot assemblies, those are good. Go for those. They, are, they generate the uh, pops much faster and they only take one uh, employment, a person who could have been used for something more effective. So, what do you do in the late game? In the late game, well, you should have your either militarily be equal to other players, slightly superior, maybe even inferior if somebody had a great start. At that point, you utilize diplomacy. At that point, you you know, late game is heavily reliant on to exploit what you have at the time. Start chasing those leviathans, start finishing up storylines and finish up your conquests. Uh, you will also want to avoid direct conquest. What I would suggest is get nihilistic acquisition and genetic ascension. Using those two, you will be able to create very effective slaves that do not uh, are not even influenced by happiness, then this will allow you to create the perfect nation, basically, and that way you will be able to take the late game crisis fairly easily. Well, thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time.